There we go. What it is, you guys? It is your girl Cadillac. I am Cadillac Dixon. I am the Drama Life Prison Wife. I'm the legally blind artist that is rapping and painting for justice. Girl, I'm hoping to see justice before all phase two black. Yes, it's your girl Cadillac. Anyways, we on foot today. Um, we're just hanging out. We about to walk over here um, to this golf course because they got a festival going on. Um, but yeah, I just want to chop it up with you guys. Hold on, I got to stop that shakage. Okay, hopefully that helps. But um, just chop it up with you guys because it, it's been so many things happening. Okay, so first of all, y'all know that we went out of town. Money wanted to, look at that, that is cute. I love those chandeliers. <laughs> Let's hit the chandelier. <laughs> Y'all remember, um, what was the name? T-Pain. 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 <laughs> Say it there. But, um, yeah, so y'all know we went to Georgia for Money's birthday. Now, the struggle was truly real. Let me tell you, last time we went to Georgia, it was crazy oh this is nice look at this please do not visit if you're sick i don't know what that is but look at the little carriage i love that that is nice yes i love the carriage that is so cute that look like something that needs to go in your garden or something girl <laughs> Y'all remember that song by Cameron? That was my favorite song. He had that horse and carriage. It's for hire. Mama Sita. My name is Kita. And we're gonna rise to the top. Oh, God. Y'all remember that song? If y'all don't, I'm a hip-hop head. So I remember songs that don't nobody else remember, girl. But um, anyway, so we were supposed to go to Georgia for Money's birthday. Now, the last time I went to Georgia, it didn't quite work out because your girl was, I said, I'm going to stop saying I'm broke, but I just ain't had no money. I literally did not have no money on that trip. What ended up happening, um, something came out of my account that I did not expect to come out of my account and it overdrafted my account. So I literally, but what happened was Money's account had drafted right before mine. She had an unexpected bill as well. So I was like, oh, don't worry. And, you know, just transfer the money from my account over to your account. And we went on and did that. And then, boom, the next day, once we settled her account, my account was overdrafted. So it was crazy. So literally, we were not, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, and then I guess I ended up getting paid that weekend and then it kind of settled out But I had to borrow like I, and I hate borrowing from people I didn't really have the money to do what I wanted to do and I was like I do not want to go to Georgia in that same manner So it ended up that money was like and plus that y'all know I had to move I had to be out of my apartment by the 30th of June Okay, whenever I move Anytime I've ever moved, I've always started two to three months ahead of time, simply because I know that I am not in the shape really to be going up and down stairs like that. Um, I know that it's very strenuous. And then I also know that usually that is something that I have to do on my own. I usually have got to um, do all my moving, packing, everything on my own, you know, and I'm just accustomed to always taking care of myself, doing everything. So it, it just became that way because over the course of my life, it just ended up being that I was the one that everybody can come to for help. But then I would think, you know, because I helped you in your time of need, that you would be there to help me in my time of need. And that's how I really think life should be. But I started finding out that when people needed me, I would drop whatever I needed to, to go be there for them. Cause I always had the thought in my mind that what if I need them and nobody was there for me, right? But then I started seeing that 
people didn't take on that same um they didn't take on that same feeling when it came to me so i could literally just help the person do whatever and it could be big it could be small it could be whatever and i usually do more than the average person would do for somebody you know in day to day it's hard to get anybody to do anything for you right not even if you try to pay them they really don't want to do anything or help you so when i would need people I found time and time again that I would just be left hanging. They would be like, oh, Kita, I wish I could help you. Or, oh, if I wasn't doing this. Or, oh, if I wasn't doing that. So I just grew accustomed to just making everything happen on my own. Honestly, I'm others' backbones. But then when, you know how they say check on your strong friend? I'm li literally that strong friend, that strong family member, that one that until a little while ago it felt like I was just Teflon honestly like one Monica say that I must be the world's strongest woman literally I had to be the world's strongest woman because I had to be everything do everything um people weren't there like that for me so it just made me stronger right but all of a sudden it's like it all just started collapsing down and that strength that I once had, I took that arm off and I started telling people, hey, not okay, I'm not okay. I need help myself, I'm struggling, I'm going through it. And I also was that person that everybody can come to and talk to about whatever they have going on. But then when I had something, oops, I forgot to hook up my charger. So we about to be disconnected real soon, shoot. man but when i would have something going on and i needed to talk to somebody they pretty much didn't want to hear it like who else wants to hear another word about marcello that's a good reason why i have my youtube now because when i do need to talk about the issues that i have um with being a prison wife or when it's stuff going on with him or whatever i just come to youtube my whole reason of making my youtube channel because i was trying to find other prison wives basically i was a part of a prison wife group strong prison wives and families and that group helped me so much because it was other prison wives and i no longer felt alone they understood all the trials that i could say that i'm going through like oh my gosh my man's in lockdown and they completely understood it it wasn't like speaking to somebody that knows nothing about the system and they don't understand and their responses would be girl just leave them or this and that a prison wife is going to have a different response for you they're going to be like girl i understand and you can get through this and stuff like that so i was looking to build a community like that of my prison wives um that's why i started this youtube upon also trying to get his story out there but what ended up happening over time for some reason i did not attract the prison wife um target audience my target audience was prison wives but i somehow did not attract prison wives i don't know i guess it's because i'm an eclectic person and plus i started seeing that prison wives were talking about little shallow stuff like they were not talking about anything like prison reform or they were talking about um getting their outfits together for visual and stuff like that like it was very superficial and i'm definitely not a superficial person i'm trying to build a channel about reform and putting families back together and stuff like that and they were more so on other topics that i mean it could be okay but you know sometimes you want real substance right and over trying to put out that content uh i guess i attracted a whole different audience i don't even know who my audience is now and i know but i do know it's not the prison wives right <sighs> so that's where literally where this channel started but then because i was not attracting the audience that i so desired I said, let me just use it as a, like a diary. Since I do not have anybody to talk to, why not just get it out there? At least it's not still inside of you festering. It is out in the atmosphere. And somebody somewhere one day will see it 
and it also could help somebody else i don't know who knows so that's why i was like i was gonna just start the channel and talk to my camera <laughs> all right talk to y'all um i also back in the day used to do diaries like i still do i keep a diary that way i can at least get out how i'm feeling um because you know it's not always that another person wants to hear what you're going through and even if you do get to talk to the person you know what people tend to do is when you're going through something and you literally just need to talk to somebody what they would do to you is tell you about all the stuff they going through and how oh i'm just i'm going through more than you going through they somehow always are going through more than what you are no matter what you're going through i could say even like when my mother died like all of a sudden overnight for no reason due to negligence um and you try to talk about it or you try to talk about this it's hard to raise your child like this on your own and you're, you're struggling they always come or when i talk about it is so hard to keep a job to keep a roof over my head when i'm freaking disabled they always make it where they're going through something worse than you they always make it in that way and it becomes that it feels like basically they're going through worse and they can clearly deal with everything and make it and you're not going through as much as they are so why can't you make it that's what it really feels like so it gets to the point where i don't even want to talk to nobody forget it i i already know so i'm just putting it out there that's what it's basically about you know just putting out what i'm going through maybe i could look back on it it also youtube is also a way to archive your life um if things ever do turn around one day you'll be like goodness look where god brought me from right so i like that about youtube and i also am able to document all the stuff that i do all the art artwork all the events i go to um i got vlogs of when juju and them were small and stuff like that so i mean i i love it i should have even started vlogging back when i was in college i was like um the 30 something almost 40 year old college student like that would have been great for youtube content like being an older student because that was crazy okay so that's why i started my channel basically um because it's it's hard to talk to people and i, I be going through a lot and i used to just keep it silent keep it moving help everybody but what happens is one day you hit that one day when i promise you it feels like it all collapses and falls and you no longer like you were so strong and now you just you can't even you can't do nothing you're you're gone completely um so anyways back to the story this time going to georgia well really that's what i was trying to say when i moved the reason why i just take care of my own self i don't bother with people i try to do everything on my own even if i really do need help if i'm in detrimental detrimental need of help i'm gonna go to my network which is my dad i know my dad will help me anytime he can but i do not want to burden him down because dad has his own life right and he'd have raised your girl so he don't owe me nothing else in life at all i owe him i owe him you know so um yeah so i don't like to go to people like that so what i usually do is start packing two to three months early if i know i'm gonna move but y'all went with me on my moving journey this time like literally since last year it's really almost been a year that i have been looking for an apartment here in orlando florida and the thing is that now um due to i don't even know what's going on but basically it's stemming off of the shutdown of 2020 it became almost impossible to find an apartment in orlando florida and everything is so expensive basically just now i had to downsize from a two-bedroom i could no longer afford a two-bedroom so i had to downsize to a one-bedroom right but i had heck trying to even find a one bedroom i've been all over the city i've been to the the um cities outside of orlando like everywhere everything is either way too high 
and they still want you to make three times the rent or it's just um the waiting list are like two hours i mean not two hours two years long so that was the whole purpose like of why i didn't start packing because i still was looking for that apartment but it wasn't until the last minute when i finally it got down to where they were saying were you going to re um, sign your lease and i wasn't quite sure but then you know you when you get to that point where you basically have to either resign or you have to vacate or whatever or like give them notice that you're going to move it got down to that point and i just said okay i'm going to stay because i hadn't found nothing and i had been looking since last year right at that moment when i let go that's when i had found a place that said they had our apartment available. Now they are taking me through the ringer. It is way too much. Like they got me going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So it is very like difficult, but supposedly I'm gonna have my apartment within a few months. Nothing that would have lined up to being in June when I moved out. I needed something in um, July available, but at least it's not the two years is not the two years waiting list like the other places so um at the last minute i realized that hey i am gonna have to move out because um if i had a state i would have had to renew the lease for another year right so or i would have stayed and i would have had to pay i think you pay two times your rent to break your lease which i can't afford that either so i had to move out basically if i want to get the new apartment so that it can lower the rent and then that way i can start being able to manage my life because right now i've just been so like i don't want to say broke so i'm gonna say demonetized i have been over demonetized at the moment <laughs> so the thing was i had to move and it was by the 30th now what happened in june June, the first week of June, once I found out that um, literally the day that I told them that I was going to vacate, the minute I told them that I was going to vacate, are we supposed to be on that side? The minute I said I was going to go ahead and vacate, oh, yeah, that is what he said. Okay, so the minute that I said, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and vacate, I mean, I'm going to stay. That is when the other apartment notified me. So ends never meet, never meet up, never lines up. So that's why I didn't prepare ahead of time. So when June came, I said, I'm going to go ahead and start packing. Now, the thing is, it's a whole nother story. I had a situation where I had a person living with me. I had to... Um, you know have someone living with me because i just could not do it and they were putting me through the ringer you know how when you trying to help somebody you are receiving some help from it but you are giving more help than you're receiving but i don't know that person just started feeling like entitled basically and doing crazy stuff and just being i don't know they were doing too much and it really made me feel like they were like overly ungrateful for the situation when anybody else would not have helped them in a way that I helped them. Nobody else, nobody with their right mind would have helped them, but I was out there helping them and that's just how I am. But then when I do help people, basically people turn around and say like, kiss my behind. Oh, you helped me kiss my behind. That's how people treat you, right? So that situation was getting thick. That was a really bad situation. So I wanted to part ways with that person. Um, it was just too much. It was, it was way too much happening. <laughs> so the first week of June came and I said that this is when I need to start packing. But I ended up getting sick. That I was so freaking sick that whole first week of June. And I don't get sick never not like that now that i said that you know how when you say something then the opposite happens but i usually don't ever get sick like that i got sick i had to call into work i never hardly call into the work sick like that or whatever so once i started feeling better i basically started feeling better on my birthday now y'all know my birthday is june the 5th right 
this was my 42nd birthday. Um, when we went out to Gators that day, it was an all-you-can-eat Gators. Um, that's wings. That's where they took me for my birthday. I literally could not hardly even eat. Like, I nibbled. I tried to play along. I tried to act like I was okay. But I literally was not okay. But I'm, you know, still trying to hang or whatever. Then we went to build a bear for princess. And then money took me to every event that was not event, but she took me to every, um, let me stop real quick. 